Welcome back, everybody, to my series on dealing with the dreaded blue screen of death in a Windows system. And I apologize to everybody. I got this uh, series kicked off and then I got buried in a bunch of other tasks. But I'm happy to report I'm back now, ready and raring to go on a whole series of these videos where we're really going to learn how to deal with the blue screen of death in an elegant manner. And we're also going to pick up a lot of tips for just general Windows care as we go along as well. So let's get started. So the main uh, focus of this episode is I wanted to show you how you can determine exactly what your Windows 10 machine is going to be doing when it gets a blue screen of death. So how is it going to respond to this tragic occurrence? So what we're going to do is we're going to go down in the search area here and I'm going to do a search on control panel. And in the classic control panel, we have the and by the way, when you come in here, you may be in the category view, uh, a view that I dislike strongly. So uh, go up to the view by and just choose, choose large icons, for example. And then this view makes a lot more sense for me. Um, we can go to the system applet. And then in there, there's advanced system settings. And on the advanced system settings, notice there is this area for startup and recovery. So if you go into settings there, you're going to see this area right here, and it is for system failure. So if we have a blue screen of death, certainly qualifies as a system failure, what the default settings are in the Windows 10 environment is to write an event to the system log. Okay, that's great. So the system log, and I'll show you how to find that system log that's going to have a record of the occurrence. There's the automatic restart behavior. So a lot of people will be very confused by a blue screen of death oftentimes because they never see it and they're they're not even aware of it because they go to their machine and it's just, it, it has restarted and it's waiting for them to log in. A lot of end users are going to just say to themselves, oh, like it must have updated and restarted or something like that. And they're not even fully aware that they're having a major system problem. The debugging information, notice it's an automatic memory dump by default, and it's going to go into the system root, which in our case is going to be the Windows folder, and it's simply memory.dmp. And that will be overwritten by default. Now, this is a default selection, which might surprise you, but the last blue screen memory dump that I saw was two gigs in size. So this is defaulting to overwrite because if we had a machine that was blue screening like crazy, the hard drive would quickly fill up with, uh, you know, no overwrite taking on. And then notice you can even go in and say, don't ever delete memory dumps. So, wow, that would be an interesting config. You would check this and uncheck this, and now you better have plenty of disk space in the event you have a lot of blue screening, because you're going to have new files created for each blue screen, and they're never going to be automatically deleted. So these default settings are going to be good for most of us. If you drop this list, you can see there are some variations on the memory dump that can be done. So one of the things that you're going to be interested in uh, taking a look at right away, given this knowledge that we just got, is if I go into my file explorer and I go to my PC and I go into the Windows folder, if we have had a blue screen, we should see a memory dump in here. And notice in the root of the system, the Windows folder, I do not have a memory.dmp. So it's pretty clear that we have not had a blue screen. But there is a more elegant way that we could find that out because after all, the memory dumps would get cleaned up automatically if we we're running low on disk space. And remember this, one of my favorite things to do from a housekeeping perspective is to come into the properties of the C drive 
and go to disk cleanup. And then I choose clean up system files as well. So now I get the full gamut of disk cleanup options. And one of the things I periodically do is come in here. In fact, look at this. I need to do it right now. I can't believe how uh, cluttered this is. There's 3.4 gigs of Windows update that can be cleaned up. Wow. But in this exhaustive list here of stuff that we can clean up, one of them, one of the options is going to be to clean up those files, those memory.dmps that we may have on the system. So when we are having the memory dump files, we'll have the option to clean them up this way. And I, like I said, I clean these files up quite a bit. I do this probably monthly that I come in here and clean things up. So you have just swept away that important dump information oftentimes that you might need in order to troubleshoot your blue screen of death. But there's even a more elegant way to kind of check, has our system been healthy? And that is to use a tool that so few people know about. It's buried in control panel. So I'm finding it just by searching on the word reliability, but it is this, uh, this reliability history feature that is inside Windows. And this is so cool. This is going to show you day by day of usage and anything that may have occurred out of the ordinary. Notice application failures will be given here. Windows failures, miscellaneous failures, warnings, information. So this is a great visual way in which to easily see when you last blue screened. And you do get troubleshooting information in here. And I'll be showing you that in an upcoming video because when we cause a blue screen of death together, we'll go in and verify that it showed up here and see how that looked. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you in this episode where our focus has been on what are the default settings for occurrences when we have a blue screen of death in a Windows system. One of the things I needed to show you, as you know, is the system log. Because remember, we said that blue screens of death will be written to the system log. And so you can see I've fired up event viewer, I've gone to the Windows logs area, and then I've selected system. And if we had, and you can even sort by level, just by clicking on that column header there, if we have had a blue screen of death, we would be able to find it right in this excellent system log. And you can see mine goes back a quite a ways. It's time for me to clean up this system log. So that's another great way we can have visibility into the blue screen of death occurrence that may have happened while we were away from our machine and we never even saw it. So I hope you're getting excited for our next uh, episode here in this series where we're focusing on the blue screen of death because I am going to show you how you can download a free tool that's going to make it super easy for you to analyze and get better information on exactly what is causing your blue screen of death. And as I stated, we'll even cause one to happen. That's going to be exciting and fun. And then we'll verify that it actually did happen by coming in and looking at these various tools that we previewed in this episode. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you're looking forward to the next installment on this video series that we're doing regarding the dreaded blue screen of death.